I mean, the one thing I will say with total certainty, we're going to be living with more uncertainty. Yeah. And, and so with that in mind, we are going to have bouts of fear, which is going to bring down the market. Federal Reserve does not have tools to fix supply problems. The Federal Reserve's tools, like every other central bank, is to reduce demand through higher interest rates. Um, as I said, I don't think we have a demand problem. We have a supply problem. And so if they are, if they believe they have to f change demand, that will put us into a recession. And I believe we need more time. So I'm under the belief we're gonna have a two year period of time of elevated inflation. American billionaire investor and CEO of BlackRock, a multinational investment management corporation, Larry Fink, has given his outlook for the markets for the rest of 2022 and possibly 2023 and 2024. Fink is convinced that we are going to continue in a period of extended inflation for the rest of the year and at least two years after. The veteran investor and businessman explains that while the Federal Reserve is putting up a good fight against inflation, the efforts may not be enough to combat the many issues that culminated in a 40-year high inflation for the world's largest economy. He mentions the Russian-Ukraine war, the transition to green energy, and other well-known causes of the high inflation, as well as some not-so-popular ones. According to Fink, the problem with the U.S. economy started a while back, and it would take more than a few interest rate hikes to resolve it. Watch the video to the end to listen to Fink's critical assessment of the United States economy and the way forward for investors. Before we take you to Fink's interview, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and drop your comments and observations in the comment section below. Everything helps with the YouTube algorithm so we can continue to grow the channel. Thanks, and enjoy the video. The markets have had sort of a rocky rot road, can we say, so far this year. As you look forward, is there any real prospect it can rec they, they can recoup in the second mm -hmm. half of the year? Probably not, not totally. Um, let's start off. The market has recalibrated itself. We, we witnessed now a change in policy in the Federal Reserve. We raised short rates. We have, so we saw a recalibration of growth stocks. Um, that's principally a, a, the majority of the downfall. Uh, and yet, and the index are masking some of the problems because part of the index are energy companies, commodity companies that are up quite a bit. So if you look at the, you know, the, the, the volatility in the market and the spread between winners and losers, it's pretty broad this year. And so we've taken out a lot of those gains that we saw during the COVID years and uh, during the two years where we were, you know, changing our lives and we were emphasizing different companies. And now we're seeing the reverse impact of that. So so that was one of the foundations of it. But now we, we, there's greater recognition that inflation is, is not transitory. It is probably with us for a number of years. And it's the type of inflation that you know, I don't believe the Federal Reserve has the policy or the tools to do much with it right now. And, I, and I'm personally not blaming the Federal Reserve for where, they, where we are right now. But I believe most of the problems we're living with today are more policy generated and supply generated. Demand right now in our economy is by equivalent to the demand that we saw pre-COVID. And so we're witnessing all these supply shocks, um, and that's creating these attended price increases. And so it's more supply driven. It's been aggravated now, obviously, by COVID and, and lockdowns in different parts of the world where we are manufacturing goods. It has been further aggravated by the Ukraine uh, uh, Russian war and where we have supply shocks. But I have this fundamental view that much of the inflation has been generated by some very large policy, policy shifts uh, in the United States. Last week, the Federal Reserve embarked on quantitative tightening to reduce its $9 trillion asset portfolio. The central bank plans to use this to supplement the interest rate hikes and support its fight against inflation. Though the exact effects of such measures on financial markets is still widely contested, several market analysts are convinced that more trouble may lie ahead for the stock market. While commenting on how all these could affect the markets, fake remarks that we may have to find new buyers. The billionaire investor might have said this as a joke, but the U.S. government is essentially going from being the market's biggest buyer to its biggest seller and putting almost $99 trillion up for sale. Here is Fink's explanation about how all these will impact the markets. I mean, that, I think the marketplace does not understand the dependency of low rates was on the QE purchases, the trillions of dollars at the Federal Reserve. But let, let's all be clear, between Japan and China, they own you know, close to two and a half trillion dollars of U.S. Treasuries, too. So there, there are big owners and big players. And, uh, and obviously, uh, what will be the future clearing price it, it rates uh, with, with less QE and now a reversal? Do we need to get up to a 3% 10-year to 
to, uh, to meet a lot more demand. And so much of this is we're all going to have to see what, is, what are the consequences. If, if the demand that we saw in intermediate treasuries uh, in May carry on, QE may not be, the reversal of QE is not going to be as big of a problem. If we, do, if we, if we have that fear that, that inflation is going to be longer and higher, then obviously we're going to have to reset all that and we're going to probably have higher rates. But I don't, I'm a belief that we, are, we don't have to have much higher intermediate and long rates. I believe the problems of inflation are not Fed related as much as policy related. So I believe inflation is really based on some big macro policy changes that that that, were, are, that are now, uh, you know, that had good intentions, but the unintended consequences are more inflationary. For instance, post World War II, America's foundation of economic policy was based on consumerism. We built this entire economy post World War II by, by with a belief that we could, if more Americans can have more things. Uh, then we have happy Americans, and we built a whole geopolitical uh, platform around that. We change our immigration policies, and I'm talking about legal immigration, yes. okay? Our legal immigration, uh, that, that was changed about five years ago, where we have reduced the amount of legal immigration. If you look at the rate of increase of immigrants, legal immigrants in the United States from 2000 to 2017, and the rate that we are growing immigration in the last five years, <clears throat> we're down two million. Oh, no, sorry, two million new entrants to the United States legally. Right. That is very inflationary when we have full employment, when we have these jobs. Think about all the need for workers. What does that gonna mean when we start implementing our infrastructure bill, when it's gonna take up quite a few new jobs, where are those employees gonna be coming from? It's gonna create rising wages. And if you look at earnings, many companies are saying rising wages are a part of their degradation of their margins. And maybe to add to that, we're also going through an energy transformation globally. Yep, totally. uh, and that can't be free. And I've, I've said in my letters that, uh, that energy transition it can be highly inflationary. And I've always said that an energy transition must be fair and just. And we can't be just mitigating supply. We need to be finding a solution. So we have a strong view on that, that, that if we don't find a way to be working with the hydrocarbon companies, with the energy companies, making sure that we have adequate global supply of hydrocarbons at the same time, move technology to create a more de-global, uh, de de Carbonization uh, platform and pathway, you know, and it's it's not going to be a straight line. It's going to be lumpy like what we're seeing now. So that is also inflationary. And let's be clear: the seven trillion dollars. I want to underscore seven trillion dollars of fiscal stimulus uh, during the COVID years is beyond any stimulus we've ever seen in fiscal policy in our history of a country. So you add all those things up, it, it, it was a foundation of inflation. And then you overlay you overlay the Russian-Ukraine war and the supply shocks, and then you overlay now COVID and the lockdowns and what it's doing for supply chains. All of that is adding on. So getting back to the Federal Reserve and your question, the Federal Reserve does not have tools to fix supply problems. The Federal Reserve's tools, like every other central bank, is to reduce demand through higher interest rates. Um, as I said, I don't think we have a demand problem. We have a supply problem. And so if they are, if they believe they have to change demand, that will put us into a recession. And I believe we need more time. So I'm under the belief we're going to have a two-year period of time of elevated inflation. But I do believe as we reconstruct our supply chains, we find better sources of energy in the interim, as we create more decarbonization technology, all of this in three or four years is going to work itself out. $7 trillion of fiscal stimulus, a global lockdown supply chain crises, reckless government policies, and now a war that threatens to cause a global food crisis. These are the challenges that the economy and the markets have had to battle in the last two years. The fiscal stimulus might have been for a good cause at the time, but there is no debate that they have also impacted the economy negatively and caused some of what we are witnessing today. What do you think about Larry Fink's interview? Is there any chance that the markets recover some losses in the other half of the year? Or do you expect this to last much longer? Please drop your comments and observations in the comment section below and don't forget to hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.